What happens to a city when the things that define it, its landmarks, its sense of shared community, are destroyed? Mosul endured the most terrible urban warfare since World War II. Two years after IS was defeated here, the old city is still filled with ruins and ghosts. I am Faisal Jabbar, born in Mosul in 1970. I was a university lecturer. Then I formed my own militia to liberate my hometown from ISIS. And I co-founded a center for heritage and integrity protection. My guide today is a man so passionate about his city that he took up arms to defend it. We are overlooking the Tigris River, and this is the nucleus where Mosul city started 3,000 years ago. Previously, we have several layers of houses above each other in a unique, fantastic panorama. And now it's all the rebels. It took three years to change my life, my mentality, from being a university lecturer to a militia leader. I managed to convince 144 Maslawi fighters who were Arab Sunni, Shia, Kurd, and Christian to join me to be part of the liberating force in the battle for Mosul. We were trained by and equipped by the Americans as a holding and security force. Some of Mosul's archaeological treasures were targeted by IS. Many others were destroyed in the battle to defeat them. Faisal's militia did what it could to document the damage and protect what remained. When you see a piece of heritage or a piece of antiquity, you study it. It's a window to the past. It's just like you have a, a time machine to travel. So that's why uh, protecting the heritage was part of my mission. In the last few years, Muslim history has been summarized to only the capital of ISIS. It's Quran, Holy Quran. While Mosul has a great history, a great deep history, like all these great cities around the world, like Damascus, Cairo, Rome, or Paris. This is a piece of heritage. This door should be at least 200, 300 years old. Actually, one of the main aims of my mission is to show and to expose this great history. We lost a lot, but we try to restore it and protect it for the next generations. Two years after liberation, and as you see, there is not much have been done. This is a capsule for IED with a wire. So it hasn't exploded or? No. Last year, more than 15,000 explosive hazards were found in Mosul. You have taken a course for dealing with IEDs? Me? Yeah. I've taken a course that teaches me not to pick them up. <laughs> The United Nations predicts it will take 10 years to clear the city of hidden dangers like this. Where are you taking it? To the river. I will dump it into the river. Thousands of civilians died in the battle for Mosul. Some of their bodies also lie underfoot. Oh. Here we have human ribs. Human ribs? Yeah. 
Now I'm standing on a human corpse. Ah, this is the rest of the body. The clothes. Maybe it's a woman. Or she was a woman. How do you feel when you see things like this? Pretty disturbing. <sighs> Not anymore. It's just normal. It's not normal. We we are abnormal. So once you fight the monster, part of you will be a monster too. Many of the city's hospitals are still in ruins replaced by a makeshift complex of cramped, portable cabins. Here, I meet someone who is actually punished for trying to clean up the old city. Sarua Al Husseini is Chief of Nursing at Al Batul Maternity Hospital. She's only 23, but she's one of the leading figures in a grassroots movement that doesn't trust the authorities to fix this broken city. Her activism started last year when she went back to the old city for the first time since the defeat of IS. It's dangerous work because there's unexploded ordnance hidden in the rubble. But Sarua discovered that you pay a high price for helping out in Mosul, especially if you embarrass high-ranking officials. She was invited onto a TV show to discuss her work and confronted by the then provincial governor. Sarua was investigated and taken to court. It took a year to prove her innocence and she was blocked from continuing her work in the old city. Mosul used to be synonymous with sectarian hatred and civil war. Today, 
Today, Sarur is just one of many young activists trying to rebuild something intangible, a sense of community. أنا وعبد الرحمن منتظرين من عندكم أن ترشحوا لنا أسماء بنات يحبون يشاركون بأول دورة راح تكون بالموصل لتعليم قيادة الدراجة الهوائية اللي هي البايسيكل وانطلاقة منها إلى سباق ومن ثم يتوجهون يروحون هو صديق البيئة وهو المفروض اليوم من الحكومة أو المحافظة تستغل طاقات هذه الشباب ممكن أن ينفعون جدا في إعادة الإعمار لنينوى إعادة إعمار البنى والبشر الحكومة مسوية عكس هذا الشيء إنه هي محاربتهم بشتى الطرق حتى حتى تريدهم يبطلون ويقعدون بالبيت. والشباب هناك من طلعوا هاي ثلاث أيام أربع أيام طلعوا جابوا إنجازات إلنا كلتنا. The main topic for discussion today is the civil unrest boiling over in the country's south. Demonstrations by university graduates desperate for jobs and angry at government corruption have led to demands for an end to Iranian influence here. More than 260 protesters have been killed so far in violent clashes with security forces. People in Mosul have identical grievances, but haven't taken to the streets. We have a lot of requests to get out of here, but it is impossible today في الموصل والمحافظات اللي تعرضت لحصار داعش ان تطلع مظاهرات. اذا صارت يعني عندنا مظاهرات او خرق امني او اطلاق نار او غيرها من الشهداء، انا اعتقد انه راح نزعزع نفسيه الناس جدا لان يعني بعد ثلاث سنوات حرب، هسه الناس بدت تقتنع نفسيا وتستقر. في صالون المطالب. فعلا الناس منعكه كلش تعبانه بس يعني. نفسيا ما نفسيا ما راهم. احنا معاهم قلبا وقالبا. اكيد بس احنا ما نقدر. شوفوا احنا احنا مع كل شخص طالب حقه لكن احنا وضع الموصل وضع خاص لان الموضوع يعني الموصل وضعه هش امنيا Many Moslawis are seething at the slow pace of recovery Getting in the way corruption and a history of mistrust between this majority Sunni city and the Shiite controlled government in Baghdad but life is slowly returning to the old city, no thanks to the central government. Infrastructure and housing has mostly been rebuilt by international agencies like the UNDP and local charities. Rebuilding a home is often the first stage in rebuilding shattered lives. Twenty-one-year-old Haider and his mother Saba want to show me how they lost their house. I'm going to the car and then I'm going to the police and the police are coming to get me. Then I'm going to the house in the area where they are. Then I'm going to the house where they are. So I'm going to the house where they are. And I'm going to the house where they are. This is the house where my son is. كلها راحت يعني حتى لا سقف لا كل شيء ما ظل غرفته كلها طارت شفنا منامات ويم راس هذا ورا البيوت طايره كل شيء ما ظل هناك من كان غرفه غادي همنا صارت متراب ما خش بيتنا يعني ما متوقع عندي بيني والله وبيش نبني ما عندنا فلوس الشون يعني الحمد لله جت منظمات أهل الخير ساعدتنا يعني الحمد لله. What does this house mean to you? For 16-year-old Safiya, this house is filled with memories of her father, killed in front of her during a missile strike. بيتنا بيتنا الحمد لله رجع بس أبوي خسرنا. I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.
هنا قاعد هنا يعني قرأ قرآن يقرأ كتب مثلا باي الغرفة كان هنا هاي الغرفة هنا قد بيها يعني الحمد لله ريحتهم طيبة بيتنا ويعني ما أريد أبدل ولا أبيع ولا أي ولا أطلع بغير مكان Before losing his house and his dad, Haider had something even more personal taken from him by IS. IS even took a photo of the amputation and used it in their propaganda. It's taken Haider a long time to accept his disability. But it helps to be back at work. The house is almost finished. The plasterers arrived early today to work on the final room. A local charity, staffed entirely by volunteers, has funded the rebuilding. Everyone in the old city is in need, but only a few are this lucky. Vulnerable families with widows and orphans get priority. Being back at home means Sabah can finally imagine a normal life for her family. Coming up. What's the property market like in a city destroyed by war? In a city laid waste by war, a real estate agent surely stands as a sign of hope. Mahfoud al Neem has been selling and leasing properties in the old city for over 25 years. His three sons now work with him as well. It was almost impossible for Mahfoud to practice his profession under IS. And liberation brought new challenges. Today, he's showing me one of many properties on his books. It's quite the fixer-upper, and it's yours for only $55,000.
Mahfoud's sales pitch is all about its good bone structure. Just so hard. And heritage features. Shuf, kinitor, shalat, kadim, kadim. Many houses were occupied by IS after their owners fled or were forced out. There are plenty of vacant properties for lease here in West Mosul. And the cheap rents attract people who can't afford to live in the east, where there was far less destruction. Although there aren't many people looking to buy, there's a steady stream of clients looking for somewhere cheap to live. More than a quarter of a million Moslawis are still displaced. Many share cramped apartments with friends and relatives in East Mosul. Others live in camps or in nearby Iraqi Kurdistan. Few have the resources to renovate homes and rebuild their lives here. In the narrow lanes of the old city, there's destruction and loss. But heritage expert Faisal Jebba says there's also much to be preserved and celebrated. Wow, oh, we have a treasure here. So it seems this is one of the houses of a Jewish family. There was seven to eight thousand Jews living here in Mosul. For Faisal, one of the keys to Mosul's identity is its historic diversity. For 3,000 years, we were a diverse community, and only for 50 years, we lost our diversity step by step. Faisal wanted me to see the ruins of the ancient Al Tahira church. Why do you want to show me the Jewish and the Christian heritage of Mosul? Because the real soul of Mosul city is diversity. We used to have a big community of Christians only maybe until five years ago. And now we have more than 20 churches and monastery and there is a zero Christian here in this part of the city. And same thing happened to the Jews 50 years ago. And if you want to revive this city from the ash of war, we should revive the diversity and ask all its minorities to return back home. Even if we couldn't convince people to return back, we have to keep their heritage. I mean, are you hopeful that this will happen? Is this happening? Is the government interested in this? So if Iraqi government is not even interested in the people who are living now, do you think they will be interested of heritage or of people who are different than their beliefs or their culture? I don't think so. So that's why people like me, a civil activist or an NGOs, have to step in because this is a historical period of our city and we have to do something if the government failed to do it.
Mosul has the feel of a city still caught between war and peace. IS sleeper cells still launch the occasional attack not far from here, so you never fully relax. But the recent killing of IS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the man who brought the horror to Mosul, was welcome news. هذا الصيف في الكتب اللي نجمع بي كل جمعة تقريبا جمع الناشطين المدنيين إلى الناس المواطنين يجمعون محبين قراءة الكتب إلى محبين النشاطات اللي يقوم بها كفرق تطوعية تنطي شيء إيجابي روح إيجابية للناس على أن الموصل عادة الموصل بخير. The old city remains littered with debris and danger, but at least in East Mosul there are precious glimpses of what the future could look like. أنا كسرور وكل شخص اليوم. وياي يريد يغير هو مقتنع بفكرة التغيير مقتنع بنفسه إنه يقدر مقتنع بنفسه إنه إيجابي ما يقدر يحبطنا بالعكس الشغلة اللي رفضوا راح نجوا نسوي شغلة أكبر وإذا ظلوا رافضين لهذا الشيء نطلعهم ونجيب مكانهم <تصفيق>